And this is our last background slide on this. So your progesterone. And you could also, and I did it a little bit different on this slide, I kind of gave you the dichotomy there between estrogen and, estrogen and testosterone. There's also the dichotomy between estrogen and your progesterone too. So you got to think about both of these. And this is the reason I say that all these hormones are very interactive with each other. So with uh, progesterone is produced in the adrenal gland, but in uh, cycling females, you're also looking at the corpus luteum here, and that's the reason you get the changes in the, in the menstrual cycle. Uh, basic role, support of pregnancy, and it's going to relax smooth muscle tissues. Uh, maintain stem cell activity. So if you've got, if you think about this in terms of someone who is, you know, let's think about it from a musculoskeletal viewpoint for, for a minute here. If you've got someone who chronic uh, joint pain, chronic bone pain, things like that, or they don't really heal very well, the fact that they don't have chronic stimulation to the stem cells to differentiate into these other types of cells, this may be part of the reason that that patient's not, not really healing all that optimal. Okay. That's the reason we can't really isolate one, one area in the body. It's kind of that reductionist viewpoint. It's not very effective most times. And then progesterone also has some anti-inflammatory anti properties, but granted, they're nowhere near to the extent of what your cortisol-based anti-inflammatory is going to be. And then aldosterone, this is one that I never really have understood why the labs don't put this in with the panels, like the, the salivary labs. I mean, they're looking at pretty much all the other steroid hormones. It seems like it would just make sense to throw this one in there too. Because you have to think when you're looking at the, at the chemistry profiles and some of the shifts that are happening in those electrolytes, you know you're going to have changes with the, with the effects on the sodium, with, on the effects of the potassium, and just water balance in general. So. With aldosterone, it's going to fall into the category of what's known as a mineral corticoid. So basically trying to balance out predominantly your sodium and potassium, but you do have other electrolytes in there. But if you get patients that tell you, hey, I drink a ton of water and I'm still thirsty, or I drink a lot of water, and you run their total body water percentage and you're not seeing that shift to any significant degree, this has probably got something to do with that. But again, you can <clears throat> you can run a blood level on this. and it's, it's decent, it's not bad, it'll get you in the ballpark, but it, I think a, a salivary level on this would probably be a little bit more ideal. But again, nobody really tests that. So that's, that's the background.